Oh, well, you know, I, I've had this idea for a while that I've been I've been chewing on, which is, you know, I, if I, my girlfriend got me into Facebook Marketplace and just all of the just the, the junk on there that you can buy. Um, and I started looking actually earlier this year, I started I got into uh, film photography and I've do, been doing a lot of shopping around for film stuff on there because it's a good place to find uh, people that just they're just getting rid of stuff. Um, and I, I kept coming across these these old either these old digital cameras or uh, point and shoots or y you name it, you know, all sorts of different, you know, tech from the last you know, 20 years or, you know, even 30 years, some of it. Um, and it's all dirt cheap because nobody wants it. And it's not, it's not great. It's uh, it, a lot of it is consumer stuff, but I, I had this idea to do a project, which is to, to just spend as little money as I can, <laughs> or in this case, the, the parameters I set for, for this uh, particular project was I was sitting in the passenger seat on our way down to illustrious King Kingsport, Tennessee. Um, we learned a and, lot about that town that weekend. Yes. Yeah. Maybe I everything. Think we, <laughs> um, and I was, I sat there and I went, I have $40 cash in my pocket. What can I get to sh just shoot s some quick pictures this weekend for $40? So I started looking around on Facebook marketplace and I found, I found this little guy here. This is a uh, Lumix DMC LZ8. It's a consumer point and shoot camera. I think it originally retailed for like maybe $150, $160. <laughs> and uh, Tim, shout out to Tim from Kingsport, uh, was selling it for, yeah, you see, yep, there's, the, there's the screenshot of it, uh, selling it for $35. Um, and so I hit him up and asked him if he could drive out to the hotel where we were staying and drop it off. And I gave him the money and, uh, spent the last $5 I had on a, on a super cheap little tripod from Walmart <laughs> and, uh, spent the, the, uh, couple hours of free time I had that weekend, just trying to get the most out of this camera that I could. And if I, if I'm really good at my job here, you'll see the pictures pop up on oh, screen. There we go. So uh, I, I, I didn't get a chance to take a ton. That's me trying but... to figure out my Amazon locker code that I couldn't <laughs> find because I, I, I needed a cord for this gig. And I'm like, well, I'll send it to a local Amazon locker. And I'm like, how do I get into this Amazon locker? At... <laughs> what the hell time was it we were at that gig? Oh, it was probably... It's a dangerous time of day. Midnight. Yeah, the... the, uh, the um... The questionable folk had showed up in the parking oh, lot. Oh yes. So oh yeah. That's that's how late it was. Um, but just a couple here. That, and these have been. I've done some very light editing to them. There's. It only shoots JPEG, so there's only so much you can do to to uh, to these. But uh, I was actually pretty impressed with what I was able to do with this thing. What is um, what is this light? This is uh, one of the little, uh, they're, they're just the uh, walkway lights okay. outside the front of the hotel. And uh, I, I just took some, I wiped some grease off of my, off of my face and wiped it across the lens to get that cool <laughs> lens, lens flare. Um, but, uh, and I did some, did some astrophotography, not the best for astrophotography but you know if it's all you got you it can, works it looks like it could uh, be stars yeah there are there's some stars in there uh and uh, i think i should have a couple more here oh this is a good one uh this is <laughs> this this was a highlight of the trip the the last day that we were there we were driving back we stopped at Powell's sudden service and i don't know where you're viewers and listeners are from but i had never heard of pal's no, sudden service me neither and uh we we felt that perhaps the name sudden service was a was a bit uh was a bit drastic i suppose <laughs> but then you know we got in line and i think we were in and out of there in like maybe two or three minutes yeah it was it was pretty sudden the the service was was sudden for sure. I, and, and it says admire art for you guys on audio. And uh, I love there. There's a friend of ours named art and somebody took the picture and tagged him in it. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> what service? So what does 
pal offer from a services perspective? Because all I can so, think is like he's like auto repair. It's oh, fast food. Oh, so so we were we were talking about pals. Um, this this pretty much. And we talked about battery. This, this is this, a reminder. We, this Miles the, brought up batteries. Oh, too. okay. We'll go to the batteries. So this was the pals that we we visited. So yeah, it was a very. It was like not in and out burger, right? My, it was it, it, no because it wasn't really burgers it was i i was what i was saying right before you got cut off was uh, i can't remember did you have something with chili on it did you have yeah a, i had a i had a cheeseburger with chili on it so. yeah yeah it was like a it was like a chili burger like yeah. um here i'll put my face back on for for the moment um but th it was it was probably the most southern place I've ever seen because you could I tried to order something that didn't have that didn't involve a biscuit, gravy, chili or all three of it, all three of those things. And it was impossible. There was nothing on that menu that didn't include one of those things. Um, but it was good. It was really good. And it was sudden. Extremely sudden. Mm -hmm. I, we, we, I think so. we, we determined we determined it was the, uh, the the people that were the slowdown ordering yeah so you better yeah. show up and be ready for these things so. yeah we we actually we were <laughs> we were slowing down the line uh because we actually had to look at the menu and see w what was even there I, everybody I, else in front of us seemed to know yeah like, this yeah. was a, like a daily I, thing for them i, I panic ordered it to be like a chili burger <laughs> let's see what this is about it was great it was great so but anyways back to the photos themselves so we, you were talking about battery when we had our little bit of glitch here in a moment ago right yeah um we, I think we were just talking about uh, how these old cameras all take AA batteries. Yeah. And uh, I had mentioned that Tim, the absolute legend that, uh, that sold me this camera, included two half-used AA batteries, uh, despite the fact that the advertisement says no batteries included. Um, and I got, a, I got a couple shots out of those. Um, but we were, we were talking about, and uh, uh, Dave has yeah. his little point and shoot here. Um, these, these old cameras just chew through these double A batteries oh, yeah. and I don't know why. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I can tell you now mine actually has a lithium ion okay. Mine has a rechargeable lithium ion, but you were mentioning about the port on the side. Cause oh, yep. oh, I think we have, well, first of all, they're both Panasonic. Mine's a little bit later. Mine's a 12 X zoom, but it has an HDMI port. Mm. A full mm -hmm. HDMI port. Yeah. Yeah, a big one. So the idea was you would hook that up to a TV so you would be able to, or, or your computer, you know, to, to view, but to view it on your TV. Mm -hmm. So you can do a slideshow because there is a slideshow set up right on the camera that you can play. And I actually had a Panasonic TV, so it was all kind of built in at the time. So you could actually, oh, let me show you the pictures instead of using this very low resolution screen on the back here mm. yes you could yes it certainly oh, is it's horrible <laughs> it's horrible you could actually use a um you know just hook it up to the tv and then have these and i forget what what megapixel this one is but it's like oh let me put this three megapixel and blow it up to this giant image you can see <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> but, but i i I think I had like an old Canon G3. Like I had a bunch of old between consumer grade point and shoots and like early nicer. I mean, they were definitely weren't DSLRs, but I feel like a lot of them did have like an HDMI pass through where mm -hmm. it would pass through the, the camera. So if you today, if you had like a HDMI capture card, you could probably use them as a webcam. Yeah, mm -hmm. with lit. I mean, you're probably not gonna be able to plug it in USB, but you can probably get the HDMI to pass through. I even remember my parents' uh, first digital camera had a, I, and that was that was you know the interesting thing about the other the other thing I find fascinating about buying cameras from that age is uh, nobody there was no standard nobody there was no consistency and everybody was sort of doing their own thing making it and just you know putting it out there and then finally we sort of got hdmi mini hdmi micro hdmi um standards but i remember my parents first digital camera had av component out over a 3.5 millimeter cable and you could take the 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 um 
the little 3.5 millimeter cable, plug it into the camera and then take your one, uh, whichever I think it's, is it, is it red or is it yellow? Yellow, That's the, yellow. yellow was video. And then yellow, and then white and red were left and right. Audio. Right. 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 Yep. So you take your one, it was just one to one yellow to yellow, uh, um, RCA to 3.5 millimeter, plug it into the camera, plug it into the TV and you could review your two megapixel files or whatever <laughs> you wanted. So uh, you found a lot of extra features. I remember you were, you're just like, this camera does this. Like, wasn't there like, <laughs> there was like a baby setting on this thing. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Let me, so let me go through some of those real quick. Actually, the reason I, I, ended up buying this one was because I was so impressed with oh and the batteries are the wrong way around now so that's a that's a feature of old cameras that you don't get to enjoy anymore <laughs> um uh, uh I was really impressed uh by the features that this camera had like you know for the for the time that it was made I don't I don't personally remember a lot of point and shoots having a full manual setting mm-hmm. um which is impressive in and of itself. It has an aperture priority mode, a shutter priority mode. uh, And those are all, if you want to take good pictures and then there's this whole dial of other things that you can, uh, that you can set it to. uh, And I can't remember which one it's under. I think it's under scene. Yes, here it is. So I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to maybe focus my camera to see. There There it is is. a little bit. Um, oh God, yes. And and actually, what's interesting here is uh, I can switch between these little icons, and uh, I have two baby settings, and I can uh, I can name them both, and I can put their age and everything so mm-hmm. that it's it stay the met it's it, it's bakes it into the metadata, which I think is just fascinating. So. As somebody that was that was growing up around this stuff, but never really. Yeah, the night. Well, like I said, I, I have this one here, and I haven't because I just got used to the Panasonic. When I wanted to upgrade, I didn't upgrade to you know a Canon or a Fuji film. I just said, well, you know, I'm familiar with Panasonics, and you know, you're familiar with something, you can get a little bit more out of it without a lot more work. So I got the I got a super zoom one, which I think is a 20x optical one, but still mm-hmm. point and shoot. But the night mode on that with the tripod, you can get crystal clear. I don't want to say crystal, but very clear shots of the moon mm-hmm. and the night sky. And the night mode works, like I said, definitely tripod because these are not, they, well, I'm saying, you know, like the, the newer ones are smart enough with the anti jiggle technology and they can have multiple shots. And RF- no, this is not that smart. But the night mode there can take them, like I said, I m- imagine the, the software's it looks the exact same thing as I have. So I'm assuming the software is the same, just a matter of the optics and the zoom. But I, I'm able to take photos of the full moon with their night mode, basically with 10 year old technology, you know, mm-hmm. software technology. Yeah. And especially if you're posting it to Instagram, which degrades your photos anyway, it all gets crushed down to a, yeah. a thousand pixels anyway. So, mm-hmm. you know, shooting with something, I mean, even this is like, I think this has a resolution of like two or 3000 pixels. So even, even the, the small resolution that you're getting from this and the uh, eight megapixel files that you're getting from it are going to yeah. get compressed down to Instagram anyway. So if you're not shooting for print, so yeah. it's, it's totally negligible. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually on the note of, uh, image stabilization, this camera does. And, and I, this was, I think one of the modes that I was so excited about, uh, it does have image stabilization as two modes. I don't know what they do. I don't know what the difference between mode one and mode two is besides, uh, I think potentially mode one is bad and mode two is worse. So, <laughs> uh, that's, as far as I could tell, that's, that's the only difference. Um, but I really like shooting with this thing. It was a lot of fun to carry around. I, I was looking for something to just throw in my pocket and not worry about. And uh, this uh, this was a lot of fun. I, I don't remember what other pictures I have to share. I think I just have this last one that we took uh, when we were driving home 
we stopped at some rest stop. Where were we? Was this in Virginia somewhere? I think we were in Virginia because I randomly had to pull off and because uh, we had to help our client uh, that that had some trouble with the video oh, file yeah. from the night before. Mm -hmm. So like this was like a welcome center that wasn't a rest stop. It was off an exit. But then there was this like war memorial fountain of some sort, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a. Uh, it was like when you know your classic all-in-one rest stop and war memorial. Yes. Uh, <laughs> a lot but, of those. Uh, um, but yeah, I was I was impressed with it. I had a lot of fun, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna I'm gonna continue shooting with it occasionally, and hopefully, uh, I uh, Mike's uh, uh, sort of inspired me to um, start the Instagram. And uh, I'm going to continue. Hopefully that will continue to prompt me to um, post stuff and, and, and use it. And I, the idea is eventually to, you know, acquire more of these crappy cameras and, and, and see what they're capable of. There you if go. You, it's, so if you're, if you're looking for some donations, <laughs> I, I, I can, I can, I can, I can spot you some ones that like at least use double A's. Like mm -hmm. I actually have a Canon, SX130 with a with a 12x optical zoom. Wow. Um, pop up flash. It it also has like some of those same. Oh, and there's not enough light um, settings. But this was a cool little device, and it used double A batteries. Which, if, as long <laughs> as you were willing to carry a, a knapsack full of rechargeables, <laughs> you were in good hands. And like I have this other one, and I don't know where the battery is for it. I'll have to dig around. But this this Canon sx230 it was one of the first cameras that the camera actually has built-in gps I don't know if mm, you mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. so you can actually get co coordinate metadata <laughs> for where wow. you took the picture like but before before camera phones so were a thing. somewhere floating around probably the old studio in my basement are probably those couple of kodak cameras that i had from like 1998 one of them is it likes it doesn't look like a, a still camera at all. It looks like some kind of wild video camera because um, it's like was it's, it it's was like, it the what, was it a knockoff of the um oh, what were those things the flip cam, not flip cam no what were those what were the video cameras that everyone used not uh, the flip video the one that had the USB oh, stick that flips out the side yeah, of it way yeah. before that. Is it more like the Sony one that actually took a floppy drive? Oh God! As storage? <laughs> no, it was before that. It was definitely before that. I'm really, I, I don't, I think it was a Kodak. It looked like it was it wrote it, to mini disc. It was like almost like the form factor of a pair of binoculars. Okay, mm. like it was oh. long, right? I mean, it wasn't, and it didn't have like a, a full on lens on it. It was just whatever, and you look through the thing, and and it was real weird and i guess I, I gotta see if i can find that thing but uh and i do have like a I think it was this dc series right um that's what that's what it feels like early digital camera 1996 yeah these look familiar uh <laughs> kodak dc series um and i think those do get into the ones that had and we did have the ones with the floppy we had the ones with the c i still got one floating around with the cd drive oh here's somebody playing doom on one of these uh so you know what don't they have doom i for? mean the, there you go there's a there's your kodak digital hold oh. on let's pull, let's see if i'm gonna pull this up a little bit yeah on a kodak digital camera from 1998 that's not one that i had but that is awesome that is definitely doom running on it <laughs> so uh that's wow <laughs> Um, I'm flipping through these real quick to see if I can find this wild form factor that I had. So, but because I would carry this around, people thought I was taking video with it because it was so large. It's not the uh, DC 120, is it? Hold on, Kodak. On a, I would say you could try DC 50. It's definitely one of these these DC ones. Let's see, DC 120. That that's that looks like. Oh, here it is. Check this guy out. This is the one I had. And hold on. We'll make sure it loads up here. Check this out. The lens was huge for what it was. Doesn't even look like a digital camera. Like, it doesn't look like it should be a still camera, right? It looks like something you should dive underwater with. Yeah, I know, right? It, it's, 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 it's... Or, 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 or night vision. So it, it is like a, like a night vision. Yeah, I was going to say, that looks like some uh, military surplus. Yeah. 
That uh, was my digital <laughs> camera. I had that, and a, like a, I think it was like a DC twenty five or something that looked more like a kind of a, a you know more like a Lumix kind of situation. But this thing, so I'd be walking around with this thing, taking pictures with it, and it was a pain in the ass to get pictures off of it at the time because you had to get special software, right? To pull it off and know how to mm-hmm. read read the thing. You didn't have flash. It was whatever on board was on there. Pull the camera, pull the, the pictures off. It was ridiculous at the time. And 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 this thing, this is our cover art, just so people know what the hell we're talking about. Uh, but, um, yeah, that, that, was, that was probably one of my first two cameras at the time. So DC-120, that is... You look that up. If you're on audio, Google that real quick. So you, you just stop when you're done driving. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so, but yeah, it's, it's just like a weird long thing. It has, it has, you'll notice it has the strap on the side like it was a handy cam. <laughs> so like that's the part that was really wild for it. But that's, yeah. it's more so honestly, it's, it looks like the hand strap is on there. So that you can, when you're not you, uh, taking pictures, you can use it as a self-defense weapon. <laughs> <laughs> it was large. It was like my entire hand, you know, it's, holding this. It's thing. like a it's like a brick with a with a hand grip on it. <laughs> the DC one twenty five. Wow, wow. This is bringing back some memories here. There's what the I don't know. I don't know if this is the maybe I got a lower model because I don't remember a color screen on this thing. Uh, so, but uh, the, the the back doesn't look right. So it was something along the lines of this model for sure. So oh, this one. God, no, this wasn't it. This one takes a CF flash. No way. <laughs> that's that's way too advanced. That's not the model I had, but it, with the same form factor for sure. So, well, we talked about... Uh, like go said, ahead. Sorg, maybe DC 50, 5 All right, we'll give that a shot. Because that's somewhat similar with the setup, mm-hmm. but the back looks like LCD screen. 50 not 5000 <laughs> no <laughs> oh we'll see what this looks like um yeah oh yeah that looks more like it oh here's oh that's oh yeah because i remember these blue buttons and everything uh <laughs> let me see if i can pull this up you see the blue buttons on the top so yeah see that that's it right there so you see a little more of that form factor in it too if you're with us on on video or uh yeah so sorry audio people this has been a very visual episode so <laughs> So, um, but yeah, yeah. And tell us what you had. What was your early digital uh, camera that you first experimented with back in the day, whether it be the 90s, the 2000s, or whatever? So pull up some of those original iPhone photos for some of us. And if you, and if you still have it, uh, co- contact me on the Instagram page, <laughs> and maybe I'll buy it from you. <laughs> I'm going to slip you this DC50 and see what you can do with it. So... <laughs> um, Miles, thank you so much for joining us. I, 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 we, that was pretty much the bulk of this, but I think it's worthwhile. Uh, again, where can people find your crappy photos? Uh, so you can find the new Instagram account uh, at crappy.cams on Instagram. Uh, if you want to follow uh, a different type of crappy photography, you can follow my personal photography account at Miles Leverio. Um, but that's, uh, that's about that. And maybe I'll end up making a blog or something about it someday, but there you go. And there's, and there's his, uh, uh, more professional, less crappy. <laughs> we can at least say less crappy officially, it's, right? Yeah, I, know, I guess a little bit. Yeah, yes. At least uh, the resolution is there. You yeah. Know? There's a lot of colors popping in that, uh, <laughs> autumn scene I'm, I'm pulling up here. So, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's yeah. it's been a an absolute pleasure being on here, and thanks uh, thanks to the other fellas for uh, shooting the uh, shooting the shooting the crap. Sure. About about crappy cameras, uh, and uh, pulling out your old uh, your old tech. I I always uh, I think that's that's a fun thing to see. So by, by the way, I want to point out because I just noticed the hashtag on this. This is one of your film photography shots. I noticed you were telling me about you were getting into film. Yeah. So yeah.